Hey guys, welcome and good morning. Hope you're having an awesome week. We're having a really good week. It's been busy. I think you say that every single time. It's I'm, I'm it is busy. Positive. But we had This has been an awesome busy though. Family pictures. Oh yeah, that's what that was fun. We got those done. Mm-hmm. Was that fun? It was absolutely fun. Shout out to Kim Hunt, Kimberly Hunt Photography. Kimberly Hunt Photography. So if That's you need pictures done, on Facebook. Okay. yeah, you're, you're typing Kim. I'm typing She's Kim. Under Kimberly. She's under so Kimberly. if you're looking for family pictures, Kimberly is fantastic. She's great. Highly recommend her. Super. Um, She's they, done ours the last two years. Yeah, they turned out really well and we enjoyed it. The, the cover photo for the podcast, she took that photo. Yeah. So... So it's good. But like we we have a pretty good time with family pictures. It's always a little bit stressful, but it's never like a disaster. It's better now that the kids are older. I used to stress a lot when they were young. Yeah. Just trying to make sure everybody was doing what they're doing. (laughs) I remember you being like, why aren't you looking at the camera? Why are you looking over there? What's over there? I know. And they'd be like, I don't know. I know. I'm like, (laughs) it's not that this will last forever if you don't just look at the camera. (laughs) But now they're all very well trained to just look at the camera. Yes. Teena- teenagers can be a good thing. It's They're a great thing. I love our teenagers. Me too. They're a lot of fun. And then we also have gone around and done like Christmas lights and Christmas stuff with um, Thomas's mom. And it's been, it's been really fun. Like we have had a super fun Christmas season already. We went to Disney Springs and did a Christmas tree hunt, uh, which was really fun. Yeah. It was great. It's just been, it's been a great week, but it has been full. It's been very full. We've also been busy with the 31 days to a better marriage challenge. Yes. And being completely transparent, neither of us completed the challenge yesterday. No. I've done a lot more of the challenges though than you have. You have. You've been much better at it than I have. I've done some, but both of us failed yesterday. We owe each other a foot massage. Yeah. Now, well, I, yesterday, I think we literally laid, got to lay down in bed. It was like almost midnight. It was midnight. Yeah. It's been, it was, it, we didn't have time where we were off our feet to give each other a foot massage. But do you remember way back when, when we tried to do like a dual foot massage where like you rubbed my feet while I rubbed your feet? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Why didn't it work? Because you just would go off into a comatose of... <laughs> no, you would. <laughs> All of a sudden, I would be rubbing your feet and you weren't rubbing mine. That doesn't sound right. Yeah. That's I don't believe, exactly don't believe her. That's so not true. So don't do it. Don't do the foot rubs simultaneously. You may have to set a timer and make sure everybody gets an equal share. Yeah. that That's probably the better option here. So... <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Today on today's episode, we are going to be talking about adultery in marriage. Yeah, in, in, habits habits that can lead to adultery. So, going to explore some of those things so we can try to set up some safeguards, maybe see some warning signs, something in your marriage. So, we're excited to have you along for the ride today. Mm-hmm. Let's dive right in. Okay. Gather around, everybody. It's time for a family meeting. The family meeting is a show that's all about family relationships. We're the Oster Camps. I'm Thomas. This is my beautiful wife, Lysandra. Well, that was nice. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean it. You are beautiful. Okay. You look stunning today. (laughs) I do not. But you said my name right. It was a nice treat. Okay. La Lola. (sighs) (laughs) I can't even with you. Okay. Hello and welcome to our family. Welcome to episode 116 of the Family Meeting Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about seven habits that can lead to adultery in marriage and how to stop it. Ooh. Yeah, and this is not original to us. This was an article that Thomas read in churchleaders.com. And at one point you sent it to me. It's been a while ago now, but yeah. Yeah, and when you sent it to me, I read it and I just saved the link. I was like, this is so good. We need to use this in our podcast and so um, here we are today using it in our podcast, and we want you to know that it was written by Dave Willis, and um, it's very good. You should check it out. He has a website. Oh, no. I don't think I put it in the notes. Um, DaveAndAshleyWillis.com is what I think it is. Okay. But I'm sure that that will get you close enough to find them. We can look it up and put it in the show notes. Mm-hmm. But it, it um, this is a good article, and, and I've really enjoyed um, 
reading through it. I think there's really good points. And, um, and so we're going to share some of our stuff that goes along with these points today. Now, before we dive in today's episode, we want to invite you to be a part of our 31 Days to a Better Marriage Challenge in our Facebook group. And uh, we are, today's 14 days in. Today's challenge is go out, get your spouse's favorite dessert, bring it home, have a candlelight date, just a dessert date. That sounds fun. Yeah. So some of the challenges are, are pretty easy. Some of them are, are challenging, especially for some people. So yesterday's challenge was to give your spouse a foot rub. And in the group underneath the challenge, um, one of the husbands commented that his wife absolutely hates feet and yet still went and gave him a foot massage. That's very impressive. Yeah. And that's really what the challenge is all about. It's about not focusing in on yourself focusing on your spouse for 31 days and seeing how that improves your relationship. And some of you are like, well, today is day 14. Why would I jump into the Facebook group? Well, there's still 17 days left, plus all the other challenges are still in the group. So you can jump in at any time, complete all 31 days of the challenge. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you to do that. We also have a, a voicemail that we want to play for you. Had a caller... Uh, had a listener call in and wants to talk a little bit about last week's episode when we were talking about dreaming. And so here is Janelle calling in here. Yeah, you can have it for free. 
Okay, that's part one. There's a part two here. Let me see. That's so neat. I, I love the the kind of words of wisdom she gives about how we can give nonverbal um, cues to our kids and crush their dreams that way. That was really helpful. Yeah, it really was. Okay, here's part two, talking about the piano. Okay. Hi, I got cut off. It's Tanel Thompson from Marion, Iowa, again. Anyway, so they were getting rid of the piano. And so I said, I'll take it. And they're like, yeah, you can have it for free. And I did this without telling my husband. So when <laughs> I came home and I told my husband, look, bringing a piano in the house and none of us are musical we don't play instruments we don't read music we sing off key so i am getting better but scott sings off key and that literally was like what are we going to do with the piano i'm like i don't know then a couple weeks later um someone had mentioned to me you know you could just take lessons i can give you lessons and i'm like what? I am almost 40 years old, and you're going to teach me to play piano? He's like, yeah, why not? And so guess what I'm doing, guys? I am taking piano lessons, and <laughs> I awesome. absolutely love it. Now, it might not be a concert piano. So that's not my goal, but I love to hear music. And so I have been taking lessons for a month now, and I am playing the piano. I still have a long ways to go, but... My dream, I didn't really think it was a dream, but it's always been there that mm -hmm. I love it. <clears throat> and when someone else said, yeah, you can do it, why not? That also helps because it's just encouraging when someone else is, like, believing in you. Anyway, I don't want to get cut off again. I miss you guys, and I love you guys, and I absolutely love 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 your podcast and i am so excited for your girls to do these vendor shows i love seeing them on facebook selling their stuff and that they're passionate about it and there's just so much oh and please thomas give your mom a hug from me <laughs> i miss her love you all bye that's awesome we love you janelle yeah thanks for calling in and i i love that at, at in her words at almost 40 years old she has this new dream and she is chasing it and going after it and for scott that reaction is hilarious like what are we going to do with the piano <laughs> yeah it's a good question but, but yet he didn't he didn't say no piano <laughs> right and he is supporting and encouraging yeah. this dream that she has now to to play the piano. That's very cool. And who says that you can't start a new dream in your 40s, 50s, 60s? There's no limits to when a new dream can come. Exactly. So follow Janelle's example <clears throat> and just get out there. Try yeah. something new. And uh, you you might fall. You might hate it. You might fail. That's okay. Get out there and, and go after your dreams. Yeah. And we also want to encourage you to be like Janelle and send us a voice message. Um, we'd love to hear it. Maybe it'll be something that we can put onto the podcast. Maybe it's some it's something that you do or do not want to have um, aired on the podcast. We can also read what you say. Um, you can send that voice message to 904 257 three zero six two all right so send that and we'd love to hear from you as you can see it was really fun to hear from janelle today thanks for thanks for doing that janelle we'd love to hear your voice now jumping into the episode for today we're talking about uh, and discussing this article that i read by dave willis and trying to trying to see the warning signs of of adultery mm -hmm. in your marriage. And one thing that Mr. Willis mentions is that adultery does not come into your marriage overnight, but very slowly. And so then he, he shares some great thoughts on habits to stay away from to safeguard your marriage relationship. Um, and we've seen that as well. It, it doesn't happen overnight. Not at all. And something to consider as well, it's not fixed overnight either. Mm, yeah. So keep that in mind as we talk about some of these things today. Um, but when talking with married couples who've had an affair, you will usually hear they, they never set out to cheat on their spouse. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's never the starting point. 
It wasn't the intent. It was something that just kind of ha it happened slowly. Maybe some brief exchange of flirtatious words or looks. Perhaps a personal text and some exciting attention making a person feel special. And before you even realize it, you're already having an emotional affair. And when you allow your heart to get close to someone, it's not long before you're drawn to them physically as well. So true. And having a desire to share a physical relationship is a natural feeling when you're already giving them your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to be aware of these habits that can lead to adultery. So don't be naive. It can happen to anyone, including you. And I think whenever, whenever I think about this topic, I think about King David. Mm. Because King David is called by God to be a man after God's own heart. That's what God said about him. And yet he fell into adultery. He fell into murder. So if the man after God's own heart can fall, you better believe that I can fall and you can fall. Right. So the Bible's very clear that, hey, if you think you can stand, if you think you're above it, you better watch out because you will probably be headed for a fall. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not the season that you can use the term, you better watch out. Better watch out. I immediately heard the better song start in my head. But it's it's a good lesson, even from a Christmas song. Better watch it out. Is. Better watch out. But it's not Santa Claus coming. No. Um, but Mr. Willis says about these seven habits, he says, these aren't specifically related to an inappropriate relationship with someone that could lead to adultery in marriage, but these are actions, but these actions seem to create a mindset in your marriage where adultery is more likely to happen. Okay. So basically he's not saying if any of these seven things are happening in your marriage, your spouse is definitely cheating on you. Yeah. So, so don't, don't use it as a, they yeah. said on the podcast, you yeah. have to be cheating. You know, <laughs> no, that's not at all what he's trying to say. What he's saying is that this creates a mindset where adultery is more likely to happen. So keep that in mind. And he says the first habit to avoid is criticizing your spouse in public, in private or online. You are not meant to be your spouse's biggest critic, but their biggest supporter. And that is very good advice. And I can always count on Thomas. I mean, Thomas is great with this. Um, I can always count on him to encourage me. Uh, when I am struggling and feeling down about any number of things. <laughs> it's usually a wide variety. It, there, there's a wide variety of things where I'm like, oh, I messed up. I shouldn't have said that. I look weird today. Or <laughs> You are your own harshest critic, for sure. I am so mean to myself. It's something that I am aware of and that I would like to see growth in. I am believing next year I will have growth in this in a better way. Um, you can do all things, but... Yeah, it's going to be through I'm a Christ. little pessimistic about this. <laughs> it's definitely... <laughs> <laughs> you struggled with it since you were a teenager so yeah or maybe yeah early teen adolescence for sure but i can always count on thomas to encourage me and god bless this poor man how often you have to just deal with it and listen to me put myself down and then be like no you're great the the good thing about it is i have something pretty to look at while i'm listening oh. to you so that what that is, definitely helps what is this today you are you're being nice today and i'm very suspicious you must have done something wrong. No. Okay. I'm just not used to you being this nice. <laughs> now, because Lysandra usually has encouraging things to say to me, I can take and listen to her when she has some constructive criticism to share with me. However, if, if Lysandra is constantly harping on me, nagging on me, and always correcting me, I guarantee I'm going to be pleasantly surprised by another person who compliments me, appreciates me, and shows me respect. You know, we're human beings. And we are like moths who are drawn to a flame. And the, the flame is the people who like us and respect us. Right. And you think about how you feel around someone who likes you and compliments you. You, you want to be around that person. Mm-hmm. The contrary is also too th true. You think about those negative people who never have anything good to say, who are always harping on you. You do what you can to avoid them. Um, you know, so imagine how it would feel if that person who mistreats you and disrespects you is your spouse who you live with 24-7. Yikes. You know, it's hard to avoid. 
but I can understand how this creates an environment where someone would be vulnerable to temptation. And I think that Mr. Willis is spot on with this first point. Mm -hmm. And the next habit is lack of physical affection. And this could lead to adultery in marriage. Um, Think about things such as hugging, kissing, holding hands. They may seem unimportant. They don't, they seem very important to me. Yes, because you're one of your biggest love languages is touch. Is touch your first love language or is it time? It's, it's touch. It's touch. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is very important to Thomas, but many of you may feel like it's unimportant, especially if you aren't big into physical touch and it's not your love language. You're like, well, why does it matter if I hold my, my wife's hand? Why does it matter if I just do a quick, you know, kiss on the cheek or whatever? Um, Thomas, you're really good about this one too, though. Yeah. You you are always giving a gentle touch. Um, he rarely passes me by without some sort of a touch. Either he'll brush my back with his hand as he passes by, or more often than not, it's a spank. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's a spank. I'm like, dude, we're in church. Stop spanking me. <laughs> <laughs> the target's right there. What do you want me to do? It's like you do you don't even think about it. No. You just do it. Yeah. It's just reaction now. Do you remember the one time we were remodeling the church in Iowa <clears throat> and I was in paint clothes and a friend came to help me and had to borrow paint clothes from me? Oh, yeah. You remember that? Yes, I do. Everyone right now is holding their breath wanting to know if you spanked this woman in our church. All right, people, vote. What do you think? Did Thomas spank the woman in my paint clothes? It's, Tell actually, us. it's actually why we had to change churches. <laughs> We moved to Iowa because he accidentally <laughs> spanked another woman. Moved to Florida. Oh, yeah, Florida. I got that mixed up. Listen, I want to set everybody's mind at ease. He did not spank her. It was close, though. You... It was one of those things <laughs> where, like, you're, like, doing something, and then your mind clicks, and then you're, like, all stop. All systems stop. Abort! Abort! Because I literally think my hand was back. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute. And I and I I don't know if she moved or what happened, but then I saw her hair, which was not blonde. Yeah. And I'm like, oh boy, that could have been really bad. <laughs> You're like, like that no was more close. loaning out your clothes to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, so physical touch. I guess it can get you in trouble. Just pay attention to what you're spanking. Yeah. Exactly. But but physical touch really sends beautiful messages um, of love. And if there's no physical touch, something is not, is not right. Um, now, Thomas, in our marriage, he initiates hugs more than I do. Like at random, you will hug me. Mm-hmm. And I need it. It's really good for me. I don't do it because I'm always rushing around and trying to hurry up and get the next thing done. So I need Thomas to stop me and, and give me those hugs. He holds my hand while driving. And all of these are sending me signals of love. These are very, very important. I love them. And I appreciate that about you, babe. Well, sometimes people just look like they need a hug. <laughs> do I do I sometimes look like I need a hug? Yeah. What do I look like when I look like I need a hug? What what is it's um I mean I can't describe it over a podcast. I don't even know that I could imitate it. Imitate it for those who are watching on YouTube right now. Um it's it's just I I just know it. It's like this morning setting up for the podcast. Um Catherine helped me set up. And I don't know if she just looked like she needed a hug this morning. Mm. So I would just stop what we were doing and, and gave her a hug, kissed her on the head and told her I loved her. And I don't know. Yeah. I just get that vibe from you sometimes. It's, yeah. Or, but sometimes yeah. it's just, I want a hug. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. I'm, I'm a pretty nice guy sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you do need a hug. But it's a warning sign if physical touch is diminishing or non-existent in your marriage relationship. Lack of physical touch is a symptom of a greater problem. Yes, right. And I love the advice he gives in this article. If your marriage is lacking in this area, start initiating physical contact. If your spouse doesn't receive your advances with warmth, start conversations about the reason why there's a disconnect. And... We've had to do this before because Lysandra sometimes, and we've, we've discussed this in episodes, <laughs> that if she's upset, she will on purpose withhold physical contact. Yeah. Which is not a, not a fair way to 
No, fight. it's not good. So. Now, I, I will say this. Most of the time, it's not about me trying to hurt you. It's that I don't want to touch you because I'm mad at you. Yeah. I'm not like, how can I make him feel the most pain? It's It has nothing to do with that. It's all about like, don't touch me. How would you treat me that way and then try to hold my hand? It's just like, like your gut that. reaction. Yeah, yeah. But that's when you initiate the conversations. Okay, why do you feel that way? Yeah. And then that person has a chance to say, well, you disrespected me or whatever the situation is. Mm-hmm. But a marriage starved of sex and other forms of physical affection is in a dangerous and vulnerable place. Right. And I think about the marriage advice that Paul gives in Corinthians where he says, hey, this is my advice, that as far as physical relationship goes, um, you should only stop a physical relationship for agreed upon amount of time to concentrate on your relationship with God. But he says you ought to quickly come back together Mm -hmm. so that there's not an opportunity for temptation. And so Paul's advice is, is very wise advice for Mm -hmm. couples. So if it's been a while for you, it's time to have those conversations about why, Why? because that can be a huge red flag waving that not saying something is going on, but you're headed to a place where you could become more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You're going to want to deal with that. Okay, another one. Surround yourselves with friends who don't know or don't like your spouse. If you if you are surrounding yourself with friends who don't know or don't like your spouse, you can create an environment which can lead to an affair. Okay. So you need to watch out for friends or coworkers who are telling you that you could do better. <laughs> you have a lot of people that tell you that, I'm sure. I do not. I have heard it in the past. I have heard <laughs> I'm not it. Surprised. I'm not, I'm, I've heard it in the past. A long, long time ago. I have not heard that in a long, long time. Everybody I come in contact with that meets you says that I married up, that I married out of my league. That's just like a nice thing that people say. No, people genuinely mean it. Okay. Whatever. Seriously. We could poll all of our listeners. Let's not. And they would say, you married up. Or we could ask the kids. Play mom or dad. Who's uh, <laughs> We who, are never <laughs> playing mom or dad Who married again. up? And for those of you that are like, why such a, a, a strong reaction from Lysander? You got to go listen to episode 100. But uh, Seriously, I don't think you married up. We just talked about how I withhold physical touch. And, you know, I'm... What? What was the other one? I don't no, know. No one's perfect, but you're as close as they come. <laughs> oh, about how you always have to, like, correct me when I say bad things about myself. Yeah. Like I said, close to perfect. Yeah. As they come. Listen, I got flaws, people. All right. Um, but if your friends and coworkers are constantly telling you that you could do better, you're going to want to distance yourself from them. Distance yourself from friends who love to point out your spouse's faults. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes there are people who just like to magnify and zero in on people's faults. And if they're doing that, they're people you're going to want to distance yourself from. Don't indulge in talk that puts your spouse down and lifts you up as a hero. And I use that word indulge on purpose because that's, that's kind of what it feels like. It's like a treat. Yeah. Um, when someone acts like you're this big hero and the person you're married to is like your project, you feel good. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, man. I am something special. You know, that's just indulging in it. And don't do that. That is going to set yourself up for an affair. Well, and even just just thinking about this, practically speaking, it, it should be a red flag to you if you can sit there and listen to somebody criticize your spouse and you have no desire to say anything about mm, it. Yeah. Like that itself should be a red flag. Right. Never mind indulging in it as you just talked about yeah and you know this may be coming from family because we're saying distance yourself from friends and coworkers who are like that but what if it's family what if it's your mom what if it's your dad your sister your brother who are putting down your spouse and um just criticizing them and everything then that's when you create boundaries so maybe you you have to be around your parents maybe you are taking care of them or you know you just have to be around your family that's where boundaries come in. And we did an episode on boundaries and how to deal with um, that negativity from family members. So you can look back on our somewhat recent episodes, I want to say from the last two months, and you can find that episode on how to set boundaries so that that's not something that 
you allow to happen, but yet you can still spend time with your family. So rather than having surrounding yourself with these type of people, you want, you want to choose friends who want to see your marriage succeed that will encourage you in that way. Friends who may say things like, I understand that you're struggling. I'll pray for God to bring healing. Have you considered finding a godly marriage counselor? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a good friend. Right. And, and by the way, marriage counseling is a great thing. And don't think of it just as a last resort, like our marriage is going to fail, so we're, we're going to marriage counseling. If you just have an issue you can't seem to get over, go to marriage counseling. Like you take your car in for, hopefully, you take your car in regularly for maintenance, oil changes, and whatever else. Why? Because your car is expensive. It's valuable to you. Well, listen, we're talking about the most valuable relationship in your life. Why would you not go in and and get it taken care of? So you ought to look at it as like regular maintenance, not, not this last resort thing, but... You, you want a friend like that who's going to encourage you in that way. They are a listening ear, but also want to push you to do, to do the right thing and see your marriage last. They're not criticizing your spouse. Um, they, they just want to see the marriage grow. Yeah, and if, if your friends and your coworkers and family are you know, always telling you you could do better and putting your spouse down, part of that could be your own fault. Maybe you've overshared with the wrong person. That can happen. Yeah, that's so true. So you may need to just stop talking about the the fight you just had. Um, you know, if your coworker isn't the kind of friend who's going to give you godly advice, don't walk into work that day and share the fight you had the night before. They don't need to hear that because they are. It's going to backfire. Um, it's going to send you in a direction toward adultery, and you don't, you don't need to go that way. So um, think about who you're sharing with. Think about how much you are sharing with them. Yeah, I mean. If you're sharing advice with somebody who, you know, they don't have a successful, a good marriage, or maybe they have failed marriages, and they just don't have a good track record with relationships, like, that's an obvious sign. That's not the right person you want to talk to. Mm -hmm. Go to somebody who's been married a long time, who loves God, who loves their spouse, and, and seek their advice. You know, not because you're trying to gossip, but listen, hey... I'm, I have this situation with my wife. We're trying to work through it. You know, what have you done? What's your experience in this area? Mm-hmm. See, that's a different type of mindset versus just complaining mm-hmm. and trying to get affirmation for your side. But we also want to be clear as we can. Uh, and we do this every podcast that we're talking about disagreements, whatever else. We aren't telling you to stay in an abusive relationship just to have a successful marriage. Right. So once again, if you are being abused in any way, get out, separate yourself, and then you you can, from a safe distance, pursue restoring the relationship. Mm-hmm. So right. Just because you separate doesn't mean divorce. You can get out of an abusive relationship and work on the, the relationship from a safe distance. Exactly. Um, this next one, Mr. Willis says might be the number one cause of divorce. And I know all of you are like, it's gotta be money. It's gotta be infidelity. He says stubborn pride. Believing Mm. your way is always the right way or the only way. Wow. He says pride is that sinister little whisper in your ear, making you feel entitled to do everything your way and in your preferred timing. Mm, Mm. that's very powerful thomas and i do everything differently like everything we get ready differently we sleep differently we we um we see the world differently we attack our days differently um i'm not always right and honey neither are you i'm not so sure about that neither are you we both have different perspectives and both perspectives are beneficial if both you and your spouse can see it that way, then it'll significantly affect your marriage and it'll destroy pride. On the other hand, if you can't see the value in your spouse's opinion, way of doing things or thought process, you are full of pride. I mean, it is so arrogant for you to think that, hey, I'm always right. <laughs> and if they have a different point of view, a different perspective, then that just means they're flat out wrong. Um. And I hope that if you're listening, you can understand and see that point of view. Mm-hmm. 
But if that's your attitude, then you're telling me right now, I'm wrong. Like you're right. wrong. Right. Um, but I'll tell you what's going to happen to you is you will destroy your marriage with your arrogance. Mm. And when we first got married, so I'm speaking about me. When Lysandra and I first got married, I pretty much looked at things as my way or the highway. Um, I didn't even like Lysandra telling me which way was the fastest way to get somewhere. And this was before GPS. Yes, we've been married that long. <laughs> the old days. And I later learned that she's the queen of efficiency and was constantly trying to figure out how to get somewhere faster or do something <laughs> faster. Most of the time, that's a good thing. <laughs> sometimes um, it's not a good thing at sometimes all. Sometimes she gets distracted and it causes other issues. But <laughs> um, I, I learned it was okay for me as a man to ask her which way she thought we should go. And, and now... Whenever I'm driving, I'm constantly ask, asking her, all right, help me make sure we don't miss the turn. Help me look for the building, the street, the whatever. Mm -hmm. But see, that's that's just one example of, of my pride. Um, but listen, there's there's a lot more. It's really amazing how much you've changed because think think back to like year one. We're living in that apartment in Pensacola, Florida. And driving anywhere, you would never ask me. No. Like, look for the building, watch for the turn. No. You would never do that. It's so crazy how different you are now. You've done a great work in me, honey. <laughs> God has done a great work in you. But it is super funny because I remember times I knew you were driving the wrong way. But I said nothing because I knew you didn't want to hear it. Like, I knew you would not listen to me if I told you, you are going the wrong way. So I would say nothing and yeah. we would go the wrong way. And and here's what would happen. It was a no-win scenario because... <laughs> yes, it was. I know exactly what you're going to say. Say it. Because when I found out she knew we went the wrong way and didn't say anything, then I would get mad at her and say, why didn't you tell me? Why did you let me go the wrong way? And now we're going to be so many minutes late or behind or whatever else. She was, because my pride and your pride puts people in a no-win scenario, mm. no matter what. Because it was never my fault. It wasn't that I didn't ask, or it wasn't that I was, it's not my fault that I'm unapproachable. It was, it's always somebody else's fault with pride, and that's, that's the reason that your marriage comes, falls down. That's right. And even in the area of infidelity, right? Mm, yeah. We, we blame, you blame somebody else. Right. Well, you didn't give me the attention. You didn't give me the affirmation. You didn't give me the physical love, the sex, the whatever. So that's why. And it's always pointing the finger at somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And what's cool though is, is how much you have changed in this. And I would never do that now. Like now, if you're going the wrong way, I'll be like, oh, honey, you missed your turn. And you're like, oh, thanks. I mean, it's so nice. What a lovely, what a lovely marriage God has given to us. It's so wonderful. Um, I know that you value my opinion and you want me to share it with you. And it is so nice. People, don't you want that in your marriage? Be that way. Um, examine yourself. Are you sending messages to your spouse that your way is always right and you have no desire to hear anything they say unless it's great idea? Like, yeah. yeah, you can talk to me as much as you want, as long as you're telling me I'm right and yeah, I'm smart and I'm me. great. Um, just because your spouse does things differently than you doesn't necessarily way that you mean that your way is better or worse, okay? So what we have to do, rather, is celebrate each other's differences. See those differences as um, positive. It's an asset. It's an asset. That's right. So this next one, Willis describes as toxic to a marriage and is often the first big step towards an affair. And that is keeping secrets from your spouse. And I like, I like what he says here. So I'm going to quote it for you. He says, secrecy is the enemy of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Man, how powerful is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's true. It's really true. And, and we talk about this in our episode on recovering from an affair part two. It's episode 39. So quite a while ago. But it's a huge red flag. It's a blaring siren. If you feel the need to delete texts so your spouse doesn't see them. Yeah. If you're keeping secrets about anything in your marriage, it's a problem. Some of you are like, well, Christmas is coming. Can I not <laughs> surprise them? All right. You know what I'm saying. Wait. Tell everybody what you did. 
you didn't order on Amazon because you knew if you ordered on Amazon, I would see it. So you Yeah, because our, our account is linked. Yes. yes. You hid a purchase from me by ordering from somewhere else. So you are not listening to this advice. No, I'm not. I'm... <laughs> But like I said, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> it's okay at Christmas. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to keep secrets at Christmas. No, if uh, it's if it's a present to to bless. Yes, so that's something innocent. Mm-hmm. Um, not only that, you you can see the credit card statement, so you know exactly how much I spent and where I spent it at. You just yes, don't I know do. what it is that I purchased for you. <laughs> right. So, but your spouse should have every password, every account, every access to every area of your life. Mm-hmm. You know, if you feel defensive when your spouse reaches over and grabs your phone, like that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Something's going on there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is, but something's wrong. If you, if you are nervous or if you're upset at all, if your spouse reaches over and just picks up your phone or if you're texting somebody and your spouse says, Hey, who are you, who are you texting? Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's not a big deal, why are you getting upset about it? Um, why isn't it, oh, I'm just, they asked me this question and this is what I'm saying or this is who it is. Yeah. And, you know, so if if your spouse doesn't have full access to your life, it's exactly like Willis describes here. Secrecy is the enemy of intimacy. Those secrets are closing off the closeness that you can have. Mm-hmm. Now, this also means no secrets about how you're feeling either. Yeah. Um, not lying and saying, I'm fine when you're not fine. That's keeping your feelings a secret and it's wrong. This means not keeping secrets about what you're buying, where you're going, who you're talking to, what you're watching. If you feel the need to lie about it or hide it, it's wrong. I'm going to say that one more time. I feel like people need to hear that. If you feel the need to lie about it or hide it, it's wrong. Period. Okay. No one feels like they need to hide good, only evil. Right. So if you're hiding something, then it's wrong. The next one is one that we promised before we ever got married to never say. Mm -hmm. That is the D word. (gasps) I felt like we just needed a gas. Oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. (laughs) Um, Divorce. Mm -hmm. Threatening divorce could lead to adultery in marriage. And we agreed we would never threaten divorce to make a point or manipulate the other or get our way. And and that is a promise and agreement that we have stuck to for over 19 years now. Mm-hmm. And it should not be a word that comes up. You know, if you're throwing around the word divorce, it it shows how lightly you treat the relationship, the marriage, and the covenant mm-hmm. that you've made. So if that's something that you're you're used to doing in your relationship, I want to encourage you just to throw that word out right now and just make a commitment from now on. I'm, we're not going to talk about that anymore. We're not going to threaten it anymore. Mm-hmm. We counseled a couple where the husband kept a suitcase packed by the door and he threatened to leave every time they fought or he wasn't getting his way. Do you remember yeah, that? And it's like, I can't figure out why there's, <laughs> there's turmoil, unrest. Why is this marriage not working? I mean, I've got my suitcase packed. I feel literally like... have the exit plan right next to the door, so you can walk out, grab the suitcase, and be gone. Like, what, what kind of message do you think that's mm-hmm. sending? This was a pretty big red flag to us as we were counseling them. I remember being like, "What?" <laughs> I think that you hit it well and came at it pretty professionally, but it definitely was like. A jaw dropper? Yeah. Like, this in, is so In my wrong. mind, I'm literally like, yeah, dude. <laughs> and we gently and lovingly as we possibly could tried to explain to him that this was unacceptable. Like, we tried to help him see that this is emotional abuse. Yeah. Um, sadly, he never came around. Uh, they are not married today. And, and we're not saying that that suitcase and the threat of divorce was the reason that their marriage failed. No, it's a sign. That was a sign of yeah. the greater issues that were taking place. Exactly. He was already looking for a way out. He was. And you think about constantly being threatened to be left. That's a sign this marriage has significant problems. Um, and, and this is what Willis says. Whenever we start creating extra exit strategies in our mind or whenever we threaten to leave, it creates an atmosphere where infidelity and or lots of other negative factors can more easily happen. So something to think about. Get rid of that D yeah. word. Well, and it's like, 
well, you've already got your exit strategy, so I might as well jump first. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we can end up pushing people towards, mm-hmm. is rather than waiting for you to leave me, then I'm going to leave you, or I'm going to cheat on you, fill mm-hmm. in the blank. Mm-hmm. Lastly, in this article is going on autopilot. You know, when you stop making efforts to strengthen your marriage. And this is really dangerous. And we've had people in counseling who describes themselves as numb. And this is not good. Like, there's no passion. There's no right. energy. You're just kind of waiting like a zombie through life. And they've checked out of the relationship. They've given up. And we've also had couples screaming at each other on the couch right next to us. Yeah. And those are the ones where we're like, I think these kids are going to make it. (laughs) Like, there's passion there. There's fight left in them. But when you get the people who are just sitting there on the opposite end of the couch, just blank, just numb. Shrugging their shoulders. Hmm. You know, they're done. It's meh. They're, yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to describe it. But they're, but they're done. They've already checked out. It takes a miracle to come back from that. It takes one or both of them snapping out and showing some passion. Yeah. Because if we're not careful, it can become like we're roommates. We're just sharing a room. Ships passing in the night. Like, you know, we're just coexisting. And Willis says they still live in the same house and Technically, they're still married, but their thoughts and their hearts might as well be a thousand miles away. They've grown numb and they silently have given up even trying to make things better. And I think the busier you are, the more prone you are to fall into this kind of system. You know, you, you've got the kids to take care of and everything else that, that goes along with that. You've got, for us, church activities and... All this stuff, work and everything else, and you kind of get into the motion of things and you can neglect the relationship of your spouse to where you're just you're just living life. And then what happens? And once again, just like we talked about at the beginning of this episode, it's never it's never just happens all at once. It's just slowly, day by day, year by year, you're drifting apart. To where you're not invested in each other anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why we we encourage you to do things like jump into the Facebook group and take the 31 days to a better marriage challenge. Right. Why? Because we don't want you to go on autopilot. Mm-hmm. We don't want you to just let life happen to your relationship. We want you to purposefully invest, even in the small ways. And the small things do so much in strengthening your marriage. That's right. And we had one listener said, say this, after I jumped into that, the, the 31 days to, to a better marriage, he's like, I didn't realize I was signing up for a to-do list. <laughs> he's like, I think I just signed up for a to-do list, which is so funny. And we, we had a good laugh about it. But the truth is that it's good for us sometimes to have a to-do list. It's good for us to have a little bit of a challenge of like, I'm not going to just um, be on autopilot. Like I'm going to make an effort. And sometimes an effort looks like a to-do list it does and it but it doesn't have to be this great big extravagant thing it can be as simple as writing a little note about a way that you love your spouse and just put it on the coffee maker that they can find you know i found that note that you left me on the nespresso machine when i got home after ladies night on monday and i was so tired like i was on cloud nine because it was such a great experience and it was a it was a great night but i was tired And I came home and saw that note on there and I read that note and it literally just, it like gave me a boost. It was so simple, but it gave me a boost. So, um, any little thing that you can do can make a huge impact on your spouse. So if you find yourself on autopilot, all right, do yourself, do your spouse, do your relationship a favor, just jump into the challenge. Yep. And see what happens over the next 31 days. Mm Mm-hmm. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list of habits that can create an environment for an affair, but they are a great start of areas to watch out for. Examine your relationship. Do you see any of these habits? If you do, don't lose hope. There is help and hope available to your marriage. Get counseling. Get help. Don't give up. 
And what we want to encourage you to, to do with the family meeting tonight is just talk about all seven of these habits. Spend some time talking about them, highlighting them. Admit which ones you need to work on. Because out of all seven of those, you're going to have a couple that you say, you know what, that's really not an issue for us at all. But you're going to have a couple where you're like, man, it's, it's really not that bad, but you know what, we could do a little work in this area. Um, or put it this way, I could do a little work in this area. Yeah. You know, and, and some of these things, if you do come across them and you're like, we actually are doing great. We, we have physical touch. We're always holding hands. We're always hugging. Celebrate that, you guys. Celebrate that you're, you have this really positive area in your marriage. Celebrate it with more physical touch. <laughs> I should have known you would go there. There's lots of other ways to I'm celebrate. I'm always trying to too. go there. Yes, you are. There's always, there's many different ways to celebrate, but that could be one of them. But seriously, though, celebrate the ways that you are succeeding. Because sometimes I think we, we are just constantly like, oh, what do we got to work on? What do we got to work on? What do we got to work on? Celebrate the successes. Celebrate the ways that you are succeeding. But we want you to take responsibility for your own flaws. Don't just shine the light on your spouse's flaws. Mm -hmm. And we don't ever want this podcast to be a weapon to use against your spouse. No. We want it to be a tool to use to work on your yourself mm -hmm. and you work on yourself and you watch how your relationship will strengthen and grow. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Please go and subscribe to the family meeting podcast from your favorite podcast provider. And I hope that you found this information helpful. If you have, please share it on social media and invite your friends and family to listen in with you. To find more content and information Lysander and I provide, you can go to our website, familymeeting.org. Or shoot us an email at info at familymeeting.org. Maybe you want to shoot us a text or leave us a message. You can do so at 904-257-3062. And we want to invite you to join us for our next family meeting. We're going to talk about something that I've actually had this conversation with many, many parents. So our next episode is on parenting. We're going to talk about the parenting nightmare. How clean does your child's room need to be? Oh, boy. Yeah, and you know, it's... It sounds like, why are we doing an episode on a clean room? This is not a simple topic, believe it or not. I hear opinions from two extremes and everywhere in between. So we're going to share those extremes with you and share how we do things in the Ostercamp home. Not that it's the right way, but it's one way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today for this family meeting. Have a great week, everybody. This meeting is adjourned. All right, baby. 116 in the books. Yep. Good job. Oh. Physical touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's just called physical abuse. I know you love it. So he he actually likes this. Isn't this insane? If he did this to me, I would be like, what are you doing? I would scream at him. But look at him. He's like a little purring kitten. I am. And so cute. I'm a fond, I am very fond of the physical affection. Yep. Even if it's in the front of your face. Yep crazy well you've got less than two weeks you got what 11 days till christmas so get those last minute shopping deals in and we have a joint amazon account so i had to i had to go off amazon to order something for lysandra how painful was that for you uh it, actually it was it was not too bad no okay because usually you don't like extra clicks no i don't but i was able to do it i think you're gonna love it um, after Christmas, we'll, we'll bring the present on here. We'll talk about it. We'll see. Okay. How here's, it goes. here's how Thomas gift gives. He gives me gifts that I didn't know that I wanted. And then I open them and I'm like, oftentimes I've been like, why would you give me this? And, I, and then I'm like, I'm so glad he gave me this once I use it. So like your AirPods that you were listening, using yesterday while you were painting. I used those for probably seven hours of work yesterday. I never knew you knew you wanted them. I had no idea, and I love, love, love them. So, so you've got a little bit awesome. of time left, um, but you better hurry. Yeah, time's running out. You want to bless your spouse? Don't go on autopilot, people. Come I on keep, now. Put I, the effort on the in. on the radio. I keep hearing the shipping dates. You gotta you gotta oh. order by this date, or it's not gonna get there. Ship it by this date. So yeah. you're you're running out of time very quickly. Mm -hmm. So to with it. that, I'm gonna encourage you to get out there, get your shopping done. We'll see you next week.
Bye, everyone.